There's a good chance that many of you are familiar with the trick where you take the flint from a lighter, you hold it over an open flame until it glows bright red, and then throw it on the ground. This results in a nice little display of sparks as the flint explodes when it hits the pavement, sending pieces of itself burning through the air. Now the reason that this happens is because the lighter flint is not actually the stone flint, which many of us might be imagining. It's actually made of an alloy of metals called ferrocerium. Ferro being iron and cerium being a highly reactive metal on the periodic table. Now these larger flints are made for fire starters for camping. If you take this rod, strike it with the back of a knife so that fine shavings come off, those shavings will auto-ignite and create nice hot sparks to ignite your tinder for your campfire. I had never really thought about many uses for these outside of their intended purpose. That is, until a rather small YouTuber emailed me a video idea this past week. He had come up with an idea to ignite these in the barrel of a little air cannon and fire them out to see what happens when a large quantity of this molten, highly reactive metal is propelled into the air. So what I did is I built a small device to give this a shot. Now, the person who emailed me this idea, Ian Builder is his channel name, also has his own video demonstrating this process. So go check out his channel below. I think right now he's just under a thousand subscribers, so it would be awesome if we could greatly increase that number. Now, before we take a closer look at this launcher, which I specifically built with the goal of testing this project, we need to do something about my ferrocerium rods because these are just slightly too big to fit down the barrel that I intended to use. So I have to narrow these down. And if you've ever seen ordinary metals like steel being ground down, you know that already these types of metals produce lots of hot sparks. So you can imagine what's going to happen when we try to mill a metal that is already auto igniting. This proved to be very exciting in my first attempt, which was to take a tiny bit of the metal tubing that was to be my barrel, cut a little groove in the top and use it in a vise on my drill press to slowly shave the metal rod down as I feed it through into the tubing. This sort of worked for a while, but the tubing got too hot and it deformed, causing the ferrocerium rod to stick inside this cutter. My next step was to try using a file, and then finally I wisened up and used sandpaper. Now I did find that if I wet the sandpaper, it would prevent the metal from sparking as I wore it down, but what fun is that on camera? So here is some dry sandpaper being used to narrow one of these ferrocerium rods. Even the process of cutting these rods into smaller pieces with a hacksaw was quite a spectacular process. So with that fairly simple preparation of my small ferrocerium test samples, which will be the ammunition in my cannon, I think it's time to look at what I have built. So what we have here is a two inch diameter PVC air chamber. This is a two inch end cap, about an eight inch length of two inch diameter schedule 40 pipe, and then another two inch end cap. In this, I have mounted a tank valve for filling this with air, and then also a pressure gauge to show me how much air I have inside. I then have an air compressor blowgun as my release valve, and a piece of steel brake line, 5 8 inch in diameter, as my barrel. I have a small crimp in the end of this barrel, which will prevent my ferrocerium loads from falling all the way down my tube because this torch, which is aiming right above the crimped section, is going to be heating them from the outside in until they are molten. Now, since I'm going to be using a molten form of this ferrocerium once it's fully heated, it needs to be prevented from falling all the way down the barrel. So it needs to have wadding that is not going to melt. 
For this, I am using steel wool. So the process for loading this cannon is to first put a small amount of steel wool into the barrel as wadding, drop in a small piece of ferrocerium after it and push it all the way down till it stops at the crimp in the tube, fill up the chamber with air, turn on the torch until the barrel becomes glowing red, and then pull the trigger and see what happens. Well, this was a fun project for me to test, and I think the result was really spectacular. Once again, this was an idea that was invented by and sent to me by Ian of the channel Ian Builder. And I'll link his YouTube channel in the video description below so you can go check out his video that he made on this same process and also some of his other videos, which even though he's like 15 years old, they're very well made and I enjoyed watching several of them. So go check out his channel. Maybe I'll put a link at the end of this video for you to do that also. I want to thank all of my supporters on Patreon who keep these videos possible, allow me to buy the supplies and spend the time especially to film these things. It takes quite a while to film and edit a video, especially when you're working with all sorts of subjects that you've never done before. You run into all kinds of problems, you need to troubleshoot them, and a seemingly simple idea can take an unexpectedly tremendous amount of time. So thank you all of you who watch these things. Thank you for sending me your ideas for future videos. And I have a lot of other things in the works that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.